You know, you can't move on the Bells Line of Road or the Great Western Highway some days, and villages in those areas are packed, but at other times they're dead, and businesses are feeling the fragility of it, knowing that at a moment's notice, a hotspot declaration might close the entire area down. Any business that relies on people using public transport or on international visitors, like our Hop On Hop Off Blue Mountains Explorer bus, is still seeing nothing like normal levels. And in speaking to tourism businesses in the electorate from Mount Victoria, Megalong Valley and Blackheath in the west, down through both sides of the mountains and up to Colo Heights and St Albans, it's clear there is a real desire by people to get out and support our local businesses and for Sydney siders to come and visit. But there's also a strong view that the job subsidy that the Morrison government didn't think was necessary until it finally did is helping them either ride the unpredictable waves of business in a COVID world or is helping them hang in until the seas settle into something more normal. That's if they qualified. And they desperately want that support to continue at the level it's at. Of course, it came for us on the back of the worst bushfires we've seen, where peak summer trade evaporated. So most of the businesses have that double whammy, and we had an extra one, of course, flood. Fire, flood, and then COVID. Most tourism businesses think that this level of support needs to be maintained, and if you talk to travel agents, their business has done nothing to turn around. I think when we're talking tourism, we should also acknowledge pilots who are in a terribly a precarious situation, and they certainly need support. Their industry needs to be maintained so that they're there when we're ready to get on a plane. There's only so much we can do at a local level, but I've certainly helped get the word out to encourage people to holiday within the electorate with the Holiday at Home campaign, a series of YouTube videos showcasing the lesser known gems of our region, the tea rooms and wineries of the Megalong, the mums and dad businesses that dot the entire Blue Mountains and Hawkesbury, the hideaways and local produce of Colo, the history and wines of Ebenezer, the contrast of the bustling retail in Blackheath and the solitude of the bush, the sweep of the McDonald River in St Albans and original art in Wiseman's, all wonderful things to go and explore. And I'll continue this series in coming weeks and months until confidence returns to the local tourism sector. And of course, COVID and fires though compels us to think big. 20 years ago, there was a plan for a Bilpin Visitor Centre to educate about the then brand new World Heritage Declaration for the Greater Blue Mountains. It didn't happen. And a little over a year ago, some locals raised the possibility to mark the 20th year of World Heritage of reviving the plan. They met with the mayor and the council wrote to the New South Wales government about it, but not much has come back. Now is the time to be resurrecting this project, an opportunity to educate people who visit the Hawkesbury site of the World Heritage about World Heritage, what it is, how it's recovering from the fire, what tourists can do and shouldn't do, who its first inhabitants were and their hi history and spiritual connection, what local businesses offer, and it should provide much needed facilities for tourists to have a comfort stop. The bushfires highlight the need for the wider population of Sydney to have a greater understanding of the environment in which my community lives. Our tiny settlement is surrounded by 1.3 million hectares of unique native bush, home to a third of the world's eucalypt forests. This is a key reason why people, millions of people, visit the region. 80% of this region was burnt by fires. Some of it's recovering fast, others not so. One thriving ko koala population is now estimated to be less than 10 koalas. There are suggestions that a revised plan of the Bilpin Centre could include a base for scientists and national park staff to support and study this fragile population. And just as the Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory in Darwin provides an opportunity to understand what a cyclone is like with its Cyclone Tracy exhibit, so could we give people a taste of Gosper's mountain fire and the recovery. There's audio from the Rural Fire Service radio channels. There's video. There'll be educators, firefighters and parks personnel, much better place than me to be able to create a safe experience for people. I see it as a school excursion destination, helping to shift volumes away from just weekend day trade.
but it also needs to work for the community. Traffic at weekends is already a problem. This needs all three tiers of government to work together so we can secure this funding for our local recovery.